So in today's world, what is under attack? Hmm? What is under attack? Family. Yes, you said it. What is it? Truth. Truth. The truth of family. The truth of your identity. The truth about your gender. The truth about who God called you to be is under attack. The truth is under attack. Okay. See what social justice warriors will say. You know, social. Eh? My feelings are hurt. I'm offended. You know, be kind. The Bible says God chastises those whom he loves. Sometimes love will hurt you. If I'm always nice to you, it doesn't necessarily mean I am. I love you. You, you understand? See, love is the greatest of all, right? Love is the greatest <coughs> command, okay? But truth holds everything together. Okay, so when you look at the, the armor of God, right? Where is truth? Belt. If you don't wear belt, your pant will fall down, you know? <laughs> you will be, you, you, it will bring you embarrassment. If you don't walk in truth, it will bring shame. Yeah, what the truth, belt of truth holds the righteousness, the belt, everything together. It holds the whole armor together. Without truth, we can't be Christians. We need love, yes, but we have to understand love is not an emotion. Love is not a feeling. Say this to me, love no. is not a feeling. Mm -hmm. See, part of emotions are there, you know, that emotion that you feel. Yes, God can work in your emotions. Okay, those emotions are God-given gifts. So we need to feel them. But the Bible says the heart of man is corrupted. Right? So sometimes when we are not led by the Spirit of God, our emotions can mislead us, misguide us, if they are not properly calibrated by the Spirit of God. If they are not properly are channeled through Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit has to properly channel those emotions, channel the way you are. You see, you have to. So, 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 um, you know, sometimes I, when I first, when I first got married, I used to be like, oh, I'm a man, I'm like this, you know? But is it really? Or am I supposed to be led by the Spirit? Or has society taught me that I'm supposed to be this way then men go into toxic what behaviors thinking this is what it is and then society now and the world begins to define what masculinity is but where should we understand what max max masculinity is where should we understand what is femininity from the word of God what is marriage from the word of God Truth. Everybody said truth. truth. If we lose grip of truth in today's world, we lose sight of everything that God has for us. Amen. So we always come back to truth. I am compassionate for the LGBTQ community, but I will not change my view of truth to fit somebody's I let you be. You do whatever you want to do in your room. Yeah, yeah you, you, you want to do it, you do it. That doesn't matter. Okay? Because I don't know how... You're not designed to... You're a man. You know, I can't design to be with a man. I have only exit. I don't have entry. You understand what I mean? So, a man. That's what Miles Munro said. You know Miles Munro? He said, look at me, I'm a man. I have only exit, no entry. You see, I, you you have the key. There's no lock in me. So, physically, emotionally, spiritually, different. God created different. And what is under attack is not gender. See, it's not sex. It's not the vulgar things. What is under attack is truth. That's the fundamental thing that's under attack. It's not about, you know... Do you understand what I'm saying? The truth is under attack. 
it is not about sex it is not about gender it's not about those things those things are very surface what's under that is the truth i believe the world has come to a certain saturated point saturation point at this it's been 2000 years since jesus died right every 2000 years it feels like something happens and i believe that now there is going to be a shift there's going to be i don't know but i know that it's we are at a very crucial point where we have to stand for truth and you will be persecuted for truth you will be called wicked for speaking the truth you'll be called that you don't have compassion for speaking the truth but you have to choose truth amen you have to choose truth you have to stand for truth very very important the bible says that we have to be lovers of of truth amen so when we have to not define every part of life from the word of god how to be a good husband how to be a good wife how to be a, a, a obedient serving child how to raise children all of these must come from the word of god the reason why i put my son in a public private school because i don't want the government to tell my son about anything i determine what i tell him mm. see you have to understand the seat of power here is very demonic you have to understand it's an agenda to change an entire mindset of a generation but the church needs to rise up and stand for truth. If we don't stand for truth, they will take away our children. They will, they will wipe away everything. And now it will be a reset again. Don't forget that 2,000 years ago, the gospel started moving, right? Started preaching the gospel. But in between, the light and the ember of gospel almost got lost. You with me there was no truth anywhere there was no truth anywhere god had to again raise up people who stood for truth and preach the gospel again amen but i believe that as we stand for truth and constantly preach by faith we will begin to see results amen and that's why we are called for such a time as this we're called for such a time as this so that we stand in faith, stand boldly. And we face all these giants. Amen? We face these demonic giants all around the world. If you see, different things are happening. We need to stand for truth. Praise the Lord. All right. Let's open our Bibles to... <coughs> John chapter 6. Yeah, my mentor, uh, at my wedding he preached, he said, God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Eve. Steve, yeah. Man and woman. The man and the woman complete the image of God. All right. John chapter 6, verse 62. Now, the same people who say that we, that we can't say certain things are the same people who say things about us. There's more hate. Yeah? So it's a spiritual warfare. We need to stand by faith. We need to really pray. Australia needs prayers. The way, the way things are going, we need prayers. John chapter 6, verse 62. Verse 63 onwards. John chapter 6, verse 63. If you're there, say amen. amen. All right. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life 
but there are some of you who do not believe for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who would betray him and he said therefore I have said to you that no one can come to me unless I have granted to him unless it has been granted to him by my father see you have he's saying the spirit gives life but Jesus says I know those who don't believe so there are some people that I don't waste time with we have to move in compassion but I am on a journey to fulfill destiny and no one can stop me we have to have that audacity of faith if we don't have that aggressive faith I'm telling you the world will pull you down if you don't have that pride that in, in what you believe. I've tested things. I've seen things in the world. I've seen things with God. And God is good. Oh, taste and see what? That the Lord is good. You have to have a militant kind of faith. I used to call myself a militant for God. There was an aggressiveness in my spirit. I said, no one can stop me. When I became born again, there was a militant kind of faith. And when I met my spiritual father, he was on another level of militants. He, he, he dressed, he, I, I, he, took, he did a photo shoot of, uh, he wore a military uniform and he said, when the devil comes, I'm going to shoot him like a dog. You see, there are things that you have to understand in the realm of the spirit. The enemy and the world, they are not going to be easy with you. They're going to mistreat you and they're going to look down on you and they will never want the church to flourish. But we have to understand and stand on God's truth. The Bible says, and the gates of hell shall not what? Prevail. How many of you know your destiny and who you are? You have to know that God has called you to prevail. Praise the Lord. You have to have that aggressive faith. It says to me, aggressive faith. Aggressive. There should be an aggressive God kind of faith inside of you. The reason why we come to church, the reason why we read the word, is not for us to have a pity party and to just be sorry for each other. It's not for us to just stay here and build one small community that's going to just, you know, oh, you're sick, let me pray for you. No, no, no. There's things that are far bigger than that. There are destinies to be fulfilled. Yeah. Amen. I'm on a mission to raise people who are going to be top businessmen. Praise the Lord. Who are going to be financially free. We're on a journey towards that. Amen. If we don't walk in the finances, finances, if you don't walk in your things, that everything that we need to do, we will excel. Hallelujah. But let me explain something to you. Your career is not your life. Says me, my career is not the most, is not, the, is not my priority. Your call is your priority. Your career, your career, what it does, it, 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 um, it gives resources to build your call. Are you with me? Your career, it is a resource that will channel towards your call. You have to understand that your call is different from a career. The career is because you are in a world system that expects you to work to pay bills. But that's not why God created you. You are not created to pay bills. You were created for a purpose. And to, to understand purpose, you have to understand your call. Amen. So you and everything in this world is designed to be difficult. It will stop you from getting to your call. So 90% of people, what they do, they get satisfied with their career. And they stay with their career and they don't want to let go. Why? They're afraid of losing. Oh, if I let go, what will my family say? If I let go, I have bills to pay. If I let go, I have children to feed. If I let go, how will I fulfill what God calls me to do? But when you understand your calling, you, when God calls you and he asks you to do something and he says, leave the job, you'll, you'll freely leave it. Amen? You have a vision. Say this with me, my calling, my calling gives, me gives me vision. When you have a calling, you become a visionary. When you have a vision, you are standing on truth. And no matter what challenges come, 
you are standing on the principles of truth and truth will work for you. Amen. And faith is one of those principles. Is the foundational principle of truth that we stand upon. The world doesn't understand. So when you say, I'm going to do something by faith, the world will say, why do you want to do something that you don't see, that you don't understand? But the Bible says, faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things what? Not seen. Now, let me explain something to you. Now, I want to buy a house. So I call Simeon and I say, Simeon, I, here is a million dollars. Okay? Go and purchase any house from between 700 to million dollars. Go and buy for me. So he goes, he purchases it, and he says, Pastor, I'll purchase a nice house for $900,000. It's done. It's deal. You just have to sign. Here are the papers. When he gives me the papers, what are the papers? When I sign it, he's, and, and then the agent comes and gives me what? What does he give me? The title deed. When I take the title deed, I don't tell Simeon, I haven't seen the house, so I'm not the owner. That's not the case. What do you say? When I see the, the title deed, I am already a owner of the, the house. I have not seen the house physically, but I own it. Amen? I what? I own it. How do I know I own it? Because I was given an evidence of what? Title deed. That's what faith is. Faith is a title deed or an evidence of things hoped for, the substance of things not seen. Faith is the substance. Everybody say faith is the substance. Faith is the substance. Faith is the substance. That's the truth. The world says you have to see to believe. But my God says you have to believe to see. When you believe and stand on truth, you will be given an ability to see, ability to see far beyond your natural vision. In the natural, you have something called sight, but in the spiritual, you have something called vision. With sight, you are limited, but with vision, you are unlimited. Because sight comes from your physical eyes, your vision comes from your spirit. And that is channeled by the Spirit of God. That is powered by the Spirit of God. Amen. And the Holy Spirit, the mind of Christ is a vast mind that is able to help you to see things that nobody can see. That thing that you're working towards, that vision and your call could be two years from now, three years from now. And you might be wondering, why am I working in this job? Why am I working? I'm slaving myself in this career. If you are not a person of vision, you will stay there forever. But when you transform yourself into a person of vision, you look at the career, you look at your job and you say, you are just funding my vision. Everybody say, my career, my job is funding my vision. It's just helping you to sort things out. Are you with me? Because the, the thing is, we live in a world which has a system. The world has something called the world system. The kingdom system is the perfect system. But, um, but we are not there yet. We are not there yet. Okay? So therefore, there are certain, you know, not so perfect systems that exist. And we are following that. But when we stand by truth, when we are a person of vision, when we have um, a sense of purpose, what happens is we can hack into the system and be prosperous. Praise the Lord. We can use the system that exists and override the system and still be prosperous. Everybody can tell you, you can't buy a house, but you will buy a house in Jesus name. Now, the result we see here now. First home buyer and uh, owner in our, you know, house. Of course, Mark, but sorry. <laughs> you know, he says, bought it. Because the, 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 you, you, you have understood your call. What's his call? I told you, your call, you want to be rich. You have a mindset of business. You have a mindset of prosperity. And that is an example, fine example. You're working, but you are using that to fund, to, to, to what? Source and to 
power, your call, your destiny. You see, we can't mix them both. We can't mix them both. You are at a workplace. You, when you are a person of vision, what happens? God, I'm learning everything that I can now so that I can use what I have to bring those resources into my vision. Mm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. The Spirit is the one who gives life. If we start living by the Spirit, we can override the system of the world. Okay? The system of the world exists, the, the money system exists, the banking system exists, the mortgage system exists, but you shall be debt free in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We shall be debt free. You have to now have a vision. Your vision must be savings account, $500,000. Okay? Access account, $120,000. How many of you, every time you want to pay bills, you put $100, $200 into your savings account? I mean, your ex, how many of you do that? Because I don't want to overspend that $20. How many of you say that? You do that? Yeah. I prophesy the day will come. You will have hundreds of thousands of dollars in your access that you don't have to check whether you moved it or not when you pay your bills in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. May there be $50,000 where you tap and then let it just flourish in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Why can't we think like that? Why can't we envision like that? You know, we always have to be checking, be careful. Yes, there is a, there is, we have to be, initially, we have to be um, planning wisely and using money wisely. And we need to be investing wisely. All of that is important. But have a bigger vision. By faith. Amen. Amen. By faith. Something could happen that God can change things around for you. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that, you know, we have to understand there will be a wealth transfer. Yeah? But all these years, the church believed that we have to be poor. So the church was poor. All right? So we need to understand that prosperity is ours. Hallelujah. Amen. We live by the Spirit. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. So when you begin to live life in the spirit, you will understand that your life has more meaning and purpose. You wake up and you don't have a sense of dread. You don't have a sense of why am I doing this again and again and again. When you go through anxiety, most anxiety you know, happens because you wake up and you do the same thing again and again. And you're wondering why on earth am I doing this? When you lack a sense of purpose, you will have anxiety. It's very easy for people to go into depression when you wake up every day, do the same thing, and have a and lack a sense of purpose. But when you become a visionary, you will see that you are able to overcome anxiety and depression. Why? Because every day you wake up with a sense of purpose, a God-given purpose. Hallelujah. The joy that you receive from God is a supernatural joy, a peace that surpasses all understanding. That's why somebody can be very, very rich out there and still lack a sense of purpose and have all sorts of mental illness and stuff. I, I don't even want to call it mental illness, you know? I don't even call it mental illness. You see, those are things that are rising itself, thoughts that are rising themselves against the knowledge. knowledge of God. You see, those are things that are rising themselves against the knowledge of God. Now, when I was younger, I battled with depression and anxiety. My heart was always heavy. Wake up in the middle of the night, feeling depressed, feeling anxious. What? Uh, and I didn't know about medication and all those things. All I know was the Holy Ghost. Amen. When I started pursuing the things of God, the purposes of God, I can't remember the last time that I was anxious, that I worried about bills, that I worried about money, that I worried about anything. I can't remember the last time. I promise you that. I have not, I don't remember, and I can't remember the last time that I was sad for a long time. 
I might have some sadness because of certain things. But when you walk with God, when you walk with the spirit of truth, the spirit of life, you become an overcomer. Amen. Everybody say the spirit gives life. Spirit you have to understand this truth. You have to drill it into, inside your spirit. Hallelujah. When you, uh, you, you, you self-medicate yourself by the Holy Spirit, you see, if you can overcome it. Some people, I talk to them and they tell me, I know I have to live, I, I can't overcome depression. I just have to learn how to huh? moderate it and live with it. I don't believe that. I believe that God is able to heal. He's able to renew mind. He's able to transform your mindset. Amen. See, end of the day, what it is is perspective, right? The wrong perspective gives you wrong feelings. The right perspective gives you an empowered feeling, correct? When you feel empowered, you don't feel depressed. You with me? But the problem is, you feel empowered for a while, and then when you go back into the world, what happens? That comes back in, correct? I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. So how can I, Pastor, keep it going? You're asking me. Say this with me. Be transformed of the renewal of the mind. Romans chapter 12, right? Which means every day, every waking moment, we have to fill your mind. I would say, fill my mind. The Bible says what? Fill your mind. Fill your thoughts with God thoughts. There is not a waking moment in my life in a day that I don't think about God. Amen. I will fulfill everything that God has called me to do. I will not die before my time. Why? Because God told me. You have to have that aggressive God kind of faith. You have to have that faith. If not, this world will swallow you up. Amen. If not, this world will swallow you up. There are systems that are placed in this world that doesn't want you to succeed. But we are living life in the spirit. Amen. Now, uh, Matthew chapter 6, go to verse 22. Matthew chapter 6, verse... Actually, um, Matthew... Yeah, Matthew chapter 6. Are you in verse 22? The lamp of the body is the eye. Can we read that? One, two, three, go. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Now, I'll read this for you. Verse 24. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money and mammon. Now, this verse has been preached against prosperity, correct? I don't know if you know. This verse has been used. If you serve God, you cannot serve money, true. But if you serve God, you also cannot be broke. Say this to me, I cannot serve God and be poor. Sounds very prideful, right? But yes, I serve a big God. Because if you are busy serving money, you don't have time for God. If you're not a person of vision, and calling, Pastor, I don't have time. Why can't I? I don't have time. But you have time to watch two hours of Netflix. You have time to watch three hours of video game. But you're telling me that you don't have time to build your spirit? 
Am I talking to somebody? Are you, you're telling me that you have time to talk on and text your friend for hours on end, but you don't have time to watch videos that will build your soul. Mm. Say this with me. There's no such thing no as, no time. as no time. You make time. If I, I've seen, I'm telling you, you everybody say manage time. Manage time. I, 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 I am proud of Joseph this week because he told me, I have to wake up at five, but I'm still going to make it. Because there's something that switched it. And he, and he told me, and I said, mm -hmm. <laughs> something has switched. <laughs> you make time. You shift things around. You reprioritize things. There's no, you, you, if you give excuses, you will give excuses to your grave. You will die full, but you're supposed to die empty. You're supposed to give your all. Don't listen to what the world is saying, you know, live, uh, live life today, life is short. Who said life is short? Life is short. Stop saying life is short, have fun. You were created for purpose. I do purpose and I have fun along the way. Hallelujah. You see? Yeah, it, you have to understand. I have fun along the way. But you have to choose. You have to choose what kind of life you want to live. So the Bible says here, you cannot serve two masters for he will hate the one and love the other or the other way around. Meaning, if you are invested in only serving money, which means how are you serving money in today's world, 21st century? How is how are people serving money? Are you afraid to lose your job? You're serving money. I can lose my job today and not be afraid. Why? Who takes care of you? Seek ye first the and all it's and all these things shall be. Why are you afraid to lose your job? Because I can't. Mm. Too many good things. God is calling you towards your purpose and your calling. Risk, risk. I can't take a risk. Invest. God, Holy Spirit saying, invest. No, I don't want to take the risk. Hold on. Save, save, save. Look at this. Verse 19. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys where thieves do not break in and steal for where your treasure is your heart will also be so people say you know don't save money just wait and go to heaven that's another extreme what god is trying to sell you is when you Seek the kingdom and all its righteousness. And when you're led by the spirit, when your life is channeled and fueled by the spirit, all these things shall be. So you are not the one storing for you. God is the one. Oh, come on, somebody. God is the one who's sending it your way. You're not the one running after money. God is the one who's sending it to you and you are able to establish things. Whatever you build will become gold in Jesus' name. Which means you're not thinking about, oh, am I going to lose my money? You're thinking about, God, how can I serve you? And the money is serving you. Say this to me, money, money serves me. You change your mindset. You're afraid to give. You're afraid to help people. I don't have enough. How can I give them? You... When you stop that mindset and you begin to freely understand what happens, money begins to respect you. You respect money too much. That's why money disrespects you. It doesn't want to stay in your wallet. I have come here seven years ago with nothing in my pocket. I'm telling you, I'm not worried about money. Why? Because I understood the principle and the truth about money. When I didn't have a job, I would just... Let me explain something to you. When I came to Australia, I, I was... I came with $10,000. All my money went away. It's just, but Swing said, I want this. Okay, buy, let's buy this. Let's buy this. Okay. Finally, I'm looking. Oh, praise God. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
He said, you married an expensive wife. I said, yes. Praise God for an expensive wife. I increase my faith in Jesus' name. I don't want a poor set mindset wife. I want a wife who can ch challenge me to think big. Hallelujah. But she's not wasteful. She's not wasteful. But she likes fine things in life. But now she's become very humble. I, I'm trying to change it. But don't tell her I said <laughs> But that time. So whatever she asks, I will just give. No question at all. Be happy. Be happy. It doesn't matter. She's like, boy, expensive. Buy it. Oh, I, I, maybe we should just buy it. It's okay. I'm not thinking too much. I plan. I think. But I'm not too, I'm not stingy. I, I like to, I like to, I like to just live freely because I'm not controlled by what? Mm. By money. The moment you are controlled by money, money will begin to control you. And he's not a good friend. Money is not a good friend. So he won't stay with you. He will make you fall in love with him and then run away. And you keep thinking about him, you'll never come back. <laughs> the way you deal with money is this you fall in love with God. And you'll come back like a jealous girlfriend. Are you with me? You fall in love with God. You come back like a jealous boyfriend and say, please take me back. Are you understanding me today? So the, then what I did, I was supposed to get a job. So I stand down, I, 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 I took my laptop and I began to look for a job to apply. The Holy Spirit said, don't worry, close the laptop. I closed the laptop and I was just spending time with my wife. But I said, you're not applying for a job. I said, the Holy Spirit said, just leave it. Don't apply for a job, don't struggle, relax. In the place of rest, faith begins to work for you. Five minutes later, somebody called me and gave me a job. Five minutes later. Not through online, not through struggles, not through difficult. It just came. Everybody say this with me. It will just come. It will just come. You have to just believe. But it's something that you have to cultivate from within. It's not something, oh, pastor said, so I'm going to go and quit my job. No, 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 no don't do that. <laughs> Build your faith. It's years of building faith and putting those principles to work. Do you understand? It's an energy at work. <clears throat> so the, the matrix that you live in will, will, will sniff you out. It will, it will know. When, when you live by fear, you will attract fearful things. When you live by faith, you will attract all good things. Simple. That's what some people have figured out in the spiritual you know, societies, they've figured it out, certain principles, and they do things and they get some result. We have the creative power of God. We can create more. Amen? So everything that I'm building and I'm seeing, I receive from the Holy Spirit because the Spirit is the one who gives life. The Spirit will give life to your vision. Unless God builds the house, man builds it in. So which means he will give you the vision. He will channel the vision towards you. He will, he will build and it, but it's your responsibility to build the faith. Amen? It's your responsibility to build, build the faith. And you keep building it and you keep building it. And what happens was, I never missed church all those years. In fact, I remember when we came, we needed the extra money. Um... They, they, they said work Sunday and the pay was double. Pastor came and asked me, should I? I said, no. She said, okay. I respect your choice. And she said, no. She said, but there's a night shift. I said, if you want to shoot a night shift. Never miss church. Never. It's not about the religion of going to church. It's about the principle of putting, putting God first. Are you with me? When we begin to put God first, when we begin to see, one day she came home. I said, you're getting a promotion. That same week, she got a promotion. That same week. In fact, her boss was misbehaving with her. I said, I see your boss losing a job and you're getting a position. She said, what are you saying? Exactly what I said came to pass. The boss lost the job and she became the boss. Within one year, I said, there's another promotion coming. 
she got promoted again three times in a year she got promoted 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 i just i just laughed i said god you're good it's good to walk with the holy spirit mm. amen don't just do things out of emotion do things because you're led by the spirit the spirit is the one who gives life Where were we? Matthew chapter 6, right? Yeah. Matthew chapter 6, verse 22. Mm -hmm. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. So when you start serving money, in your heart, you, would, you will not want to serve God. You don't want to serve God. You can save, you can carry everything, you can store up things in your bank account, everything. But because you lack se sense of purpose, it will rust and the moths will eat it away. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. But when you serve God with a purpose and you, you, you make money and become prosperous from a place of vision and purpose, what happens? Those things, kingdom prosperity is for kingdom purpose. Mm -hmm. Okay? You become a generous giver you become a generous friend you become generous in every way are you with me you begin to understand that money doesn't control me god controls my life i am in control of my destiny amen you begin to have less you are you you you, you lose that fear of money you stop serving money and money comes around and begins to stick to you praise the lord so the Bible says here, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. So what you put inside of you, what you watch, what you read, what you allow to enter you. There are, now, there are certain doorways through which information can get inside of your soul. What are those doorways? Your eyes, your ears, your senses basically. But your ears and eyes, they receive. So what happens is whenever you watch something, you're downloading it. When you're on TikTok, you're downloading information. It goes inside of your soul. It channels you. It shapes you. Whether you like it or not, it shapes you. Okay? It shapes your mindset. You start having opinion about things. Okay? We start developing these uh, opinions about things. We start these layers and layers of opinion. You don't even believe it. You don't even know what it is. But you start building those opinions. But what you're really supposed to do is meditate on God's word. Okay, so when you meditate on God's word and the Holy Spirit begins to give life, now what happens? You have world events, you have current events, uh, you know, all those things happening. And the Holy Spirit will give you the wisdom to discern and decide what is the right thing to do. Amen. You are given wisdom to handle the thing. See Daniel, for example, in the Bible, right? The Bible says, that the king said, your gods have what? Given this to you. He was full of wisdom. He was given the king's food. He said, no, 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 don't give me that. Why? Because he says, you're giving me things, thinking that this will change me. But I want to prove to you. See, it doesn't mean vegetables made him smart. Okay, so please don't take away my meat. Okay. It doesn't mean that Daniel ate vegetables so he became more handsome. No, no, it's not the truth. What it means is, see, your great food is not going to change. I want to prove to you that it is God who does this for me. Why do I fast? Because I fast because I am, I am, I'm, 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 I'm keeping away from all these things and, and I'm depending on the strength of God. Okay, why are you denying the food? Because what you're doing is, uh, you love food too much, you know. You can't stop thinking about dinner and lunch when you're in church. But what are you doing when you fast? You're denying yourself of that and you're relying on the strength that comes from the Spirit of God. The Spirit is the one who gives life. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. And God's word is spirit and life. Amen. So that life, it, 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 it fuels you and, and, and you begin to function.
That's what caused Daniel. It was because Daniel was now relying on the Holy Spirit and not on the resources of the world. You have to die to those desires. Every resource. When I came to Australia, when I first came, the original plan was, the church told me that all my expenses will be taken care of. Everything, 100%. Nothing to worry about. And on my way to say and receive the resources of the check, God told me, don't take a single peso. I said, what? I don't have anything in my bank account. I just started receiving salary of 25,000 pesos. And it's not enough. Just enough to pay my bills. Just enough to pay my rent. How on earth am I going to go to a foreign nation, Melbourne, without any money? I said, trust me, walk by faith. Not a single dollar in my account. All I had was my car and some money here and there. When I said and took the step of faith and I said, Holy Spirit, you have told me I respect what you said. I honor what you said. I told my spiritual father, I said, Dad, I'm not supposed to take it. He said, whatever God tells you. I said, God is fueling my vision. Amen? He told me, okay, I bless you, you go. Within one or two weeks, I had $10,000 in my bank account. Australian dollar. 10,000 Australian dollar. Free tickets handed over to me because someone came and said, I heard you're going to Australia. Can I give you, buy you plane tickets? Let me explain something to you. The day I decided to walk by faith and be fueled by the Spirit of God, God has taken care of me. Amen? You too can walk in the supernatural life of provision. The reason why, see, supernatural cannot walk with natural. In a sense that if you decide to walk in the natural, the supernatural will respect that. It will back off. You understand? But when you let go of the natural and decide to walk by faith, the supernatural will engulf and envelop you. And you will start be living a supernatural life. Amen? But don't do it because I said so. Do it because you are walking with the Spirit of God. You are allowing the Spirit to give life. Amen? You allow the Spirit to give life. Every decision that you make, every choice that you make, allow Holy Spirit to lead you. And you will, you will escape a lot of heart pain, heartache and wastage. Anytime I did something because I was ambitious, I lost money. But anytime I did something because it was a vision from God, it flourished. Amen. So there are many pearls in this world. Be careful to choose the diamond. Okay. Don't let go of the diamond in pursuit of the, the fake pearls. There are many options in the world. There are many things that you can do. You have to, when you walk in the Spirit, when you walk with the Holy Spirit, He will guide you precisely exactly where you need to be, what you need to do. Amen? Everybody says, Spirit gives life. Spirit gives life. And then what happens? All these things shall be added to you. Then it cannot be taken away from you. Amen? The moth and the rust and everything cannot affect it. Why? Because that wealth is for kingdom purpose. Why am I saying guys become rich? Come, let's build a school. Amen. Let's build hospitals. Let's build things. Let's build a community. I want to build communities. Amen. I don't want to rely on all these people. I want, I want, I want us to be self-reliant. Depending on God. Led by the Spirit. Fueled by His vision. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Let's stand to our feet. Father, your spirit gives life. We are who we are because of the way you have created us, the way you have shaped us. Father, help us to look beyond the natural into the supernatural, O Lord. We submit, we surrender. 
in everything that we do. Help us to walk by faith. Lord, it's so easy to slip away from faith and just take our eyes off you. But Lord, it is a title deed. It is the substance. It is the evidence of things hoped for. Substance of things hoped for. Evidence of things not seen, O oh Lord. Let it grow deeper and deeper in our hearts. Let the Spirit give life and fuel our vision, our sense of purpose and everything that you have and want for us, O oh Lord. Let us not be driven by ambition or by selfish desires, but by a sense of purpose from the Holy Spirit. I pray that each and every one of them here will get that vision, catch that vision, and it will come to pass in their lives, O oh Father God. I pray your, your will be done in their lives. Let your hand of grace be upon them. Cover them with your precious blood. Lord, be with them throughout the rest of the week. And I speak and I command all success to come their way, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each and every one of us for now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you guys.